We'll start in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God. Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, now and ever to the age while ages. Amen. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Today is the fourth Sunday of the blessed month of Baba. Hope everything is going well with you. Um, on this day, the church has arranged for us the continuation of the theme um, regarding the power of the Lord, right? Um, and as the gospels say, the power, the presence of the lord um was present to heal and or the power of the lord was present to heal right so um this is the same same theme that is present throughout the entire uh, gospel um <clears throat> and as we have been kind of tracking uh the different sundays of this month um, well, first, let's just read the passage. Um, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. Now it happened the day after that he went to a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him in a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin and those who carried him stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak and he presented him to his mother. Then fear came upon all. They glorified God saying, a great prophet has risen up among us and God has visited his people. And this report about him went throughout all Judea and all the surrounding region. Glory be to God forever. Amen. So this is a short passage from the Gospel according to St. Luke, who we actually celebrate uh, today. <clears throat> and if you were following with us the, the four Sundays, um, the theme of the Lord's power and authority over everything, over the body, over the world, over the devil um, and his demons, and then finally the, the last enemy, which is death, right, <clears throat> and corruption. And so the church uh, places these four um, themes with the, with, with the Gospels relating to them, right? Um, but instead of kind of just focusing on the Gospel in this passage, which is found in Luke chapter 7, I thought it would be interesting to maybe compare some of the other um, stories that we find in the same chapter, right? <clears throat> and St. Cyril said it was intentional that St. Luke mentions the passage right before, which is the healing of the servant, of the centurion of the soldier um, in the beginning of chapter seven. So here we see the sickness, um, which we uh, read about with a different healing um, on the first Sunday of this month. Uh, <clears throat> and he connects that story with the story of today when he raises the boy um, who, uh, who was the son of uh, his widow, um, or the widow. So St. Cyril says, um, St. Luke intentionally joins this miracle to show us that some people might have read the story of the healing saying, oh, he wasn't really that close to death. It wasn't that great of an act. But then it follows with an even greater act where he raises the dead. And then the people, um, the disciples of St. John the Baptist come um, after this and um, he, he actually had sent them to, to, to ask, are you, are you the coming one, right, or another, right, in verses uh, 18 or so to 35. Um, and the Lord tell them, well, what have you seen so far? And so it, in that passage, um, it describes that those disciples came and they were seeing the Lord heal the blind, the lame, the lepers, the deaf, and, and finally the dead was raised. Right, which is the same message basically of the of, of this month. You, you make a conclusion about the Lord by saying, "Okay, what did He do? What did He say? What is the power of the Lord?" Not only present in the gospel that we read, but in our life that we live. So, all of the miracles that the Lord performed um, in in the gospel is one thing, but there's also many miracles that the Lord performs in our life. Um, everyone has different circumstances, but the Lord is not too weak not to have any influence or impact on you the question is what is your response to those things and that's why saying uh, the lord responds to those uh, disciples saying i don't have to tell you just see <laughs> just see and believe right so when we see the power of the lord 
um, that changes our life and our perception and our relationship uh, with, with him. Uh, <clears throat> and so uh, St. Cyril again, he says, St. Luke uh, very beautifully displays to us the manifestation of a godlike power, because Christ is God, right? In order that in every way it may be known that the only begotten word or son of the Father, Jesus Christ, is truly God, even though he became man. Um, and produces everything by the word of his power. Okay, um, <clears throat> so what is what is he saying here? He's saying, okay, this proves to us that Christ is God. But how did he perform this? How did he perform this miracle? Um, some, you know, for example, like with uh, the mother-in-law of Simon, right? He took her by the hand and raised her, right? Um, but with Lazarus, for example. Or in, in this story, he touches the coffin, but he speaks. And this is important that the Lord, um, and even if you look at this chapter, when the Lord performs these miracles, um, he is saying things, right? Um, and this shows us not only the power of Jesus Christ, but the power of the word of God, right? So here, um, it's a play on words, right? Because the Lord Jesus Christ is called the word, but also the scripture is called the word of God. And both have power. Um, and so uh, in chapter seven, for example, um, again, we see when he heals the centurion's servant, um, the, the Lord is about to go to the place where the servant is. And, says, and then the centurion says, no, no, you don't need to go. Um, just say the word and he will be healed, right? Um, because I'm a man of authority, and whatever I say goes, and when I say something, my subordinates do what I, what I say. So I ha believe that you have the power, whatever you say will be done, right? Um, <clears throat> and so this is, the Lord commends him for such great faith, um, even though he was not uh, an Israelite, right? Um, <clears throat> and then in, uh, the gospel today, of course, um, so we'll go one by one, but um, the Lord asks, or he says this phrase, I say to you, I say to you, or when he's talking about John the Baptist, he's more than a prophet, right? And then in the passage, which we actually read in the church a few weeks ago, when the Lord um, forgives and heals the, the repentant woman, and when he's talking to Simon, uh, Simeon, he says, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, right? So he proclaims the proclamation of uh, forgiveness of sins through his mouth, right? And then finally, with Lazarus and with the boy of today, the, the Lord says, I say to you, arise. And he rose from the dead by the word of Christ. Why is this important? Because... Um, well, even when you go to the beginning, as we were studying in the creed, if you go to the beginning, how did the Lord create? Then the Lord God said, let there be light, and there was light. And, and that phrase, God said, is mentioned maybe over 10 times in that first chapter of Genesis to show that the power of the Lord is present not only in what he does, but what he says. And when we read the scripture, we have to believe that there is a great power in hearing um, this word of God, and not just hearing, but power also to have an impact in our life. Um, of course, it comes with faith, but test and see, taste and see that um, the Lord is sweet and the Lord is powerful. So I know we probably um, mentioned this before, but uh, when you look at the four Gospels, <clears throat> um, there the fathers tell us it's very intentional that God gave us four different accounts of um, the life and works of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? <clears throat> um, it, and um, the church teaches us, although the three, the four came from different backgrounds and spoke to different groups, wrote to different groups, right? Um, and even uh, focused on a different aspect of who Christ was, as, as you could read here. I, I won't go, you know, point by point. Um, all of this helps us come to a better understanding of who Christ is and also taps into a special power or strength that we get from reading scripture, right? So part of it enlightens our mind 
and we have to study with our mind. Like, you know, for example, when we um, memorize scripture or when we um, read of the different events that happen in the history, historical books, right? Um, part of, um, like St. Luke, for example, he focuses on, on um, the heart and the healings that happen. As a physician, um, as we read today in the Synexarium, um, he was a physician and he healed. Um, and he was also Gentile, he was also Greek. Um, so he wrote to these uh, same people of his to, to show them this is the good savior, this is the pure sacrifice, this is the one who gives healing and the one who cares, the one who um, is the lover of mankind, right? Uh, if you noticed in the gospel of today, right? <clears throat> He had compassion on her, um, as, as everyone else in there did, but he told her, do not weep. Um, why? Because he cared. He, he wanted, uh, as St. Cyril says, he immediately stopped the cause of her weeping, right? When he said, do not weep. Um, <clears throat> and he had mercy on her so that she may stop uh, weeping. Um, so the Lord cares for us, right? And this is kind of the, the theme of, of, or the way the Lord uh, sorry, of St. Luke, how he focuses on this aspect of, of Christ of, or of God. Um, and so when we take the four Gospels, we see collectively how um, the Word of God has power to help us, to give us wisdom, to give us strength, so that we can actually do the Word of God and not just learn the Word of God. It gives us comfort when we're sad or when we're lonely or when we're lost um, it, it gives a direction and gives us joy when, when we read the scriptures faithfully um, and regularly, right? And ultimately, it gives us life because this is the life-giving word of, of God. Uh, it, not only life here, like purpose in, in our life, but it gives us eternal, eternity because it helps us live according to the scripture, according to the law. But, and when we do that, we are saved, um, through um, following the commandments that the, the church and the scriptures uh, teach us. Um, <clears throat> so the word of God has uh, wisdom, has strength, it has comfort, has life um, for all of us. Uh, and um, like St. Paul writes to uh, Timothy, who is also a Greek background, Right? <clears throat> he says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, focusing on the mind here, or what the understanding of the faith is, for reproof um, regarding the heart, correction of the heart, right? for correction, which is correction of our acts, right? and for instruction in righteousness, how to be holy. This is the, the, the life that is living according to eternal life. Right, and this so what so this is the purpose, as Saint Paul says, of Scripture, is to give us um, healing and strength of our minds, bodies, hearts, and spirits. Right, and then he says that that person, that holy man or woman of God, may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every every good work. So we have the power to do anything in the name of God. Uh, <clears throat> and so. Um, but let's focus a little bit since today is the Feast of St. Luke and the Gospel is from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Um, we see how, like I said, he had a Greek background. He was a physician, also an artist. He wrote um, the, the first icon of the Holy Virgin Mary with the Lord Christ, um, as tradition uh, teaches us. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, the Gospel focuses on God's love especially the love for sinners, right? And the good shepherd who seeks for the lost sheep, as we see in the gospel of today. Um, not only was the woman on the verge of being lost because she was losing all hope after losing her husband and her son, right? Um, but the son, the son himself, he was, you know, in, in death um, and he brought him back from that state. Um, and so this reminds us of all the lost sheep who are living in spiritual death and need to be resurrected by um, the good shepherd of the sheep. <clears throat> and throughout the gospel, you know, like uh, the, the healing um, of 
uh, or when the when the good Samaritan came and took care of the man who was injured, right? Um, or the good father in the story of the prodigal son, or the stories of those who were good in heart compared to those who weren't. Um, like, for example, the, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, <clears throat> right? So St. Luke here shows how God grants us forgiveness. Um, like when he said to the woman, I say to you, your sins are forgiven in Luke chapter seven. Um, and how the word of God gives us love, joy, peace, when we read it regularly and seriously. Um, <clears throat> of course, um, the comfort that comes from God, right? Um, or the healing or the forgiveness that comes from God um, starts with the word of God, right? Because the word of God does what? It rebukes us. It makes us recognize that this, the, the state that we're in or what we're doing is wrong. Sometimes when our parents or our servants or um, our friends tell us we're doing wrong, we, may, we might not uh, think um, seriously about it. But when scripture points it out to us, that's, that helps the process of repentance and it leads us to confession. Um, and so um, this is the power of God, um, not only to comfort, but also to, to rebuke our hearts and, and to um, pierce us with, with, with honesty, an honest look at who God is and who we are. Um, so uh, this is just, you know, a small glimpse of this. Uh, St. Ephraim the Syrian, he talks about the same thing here, right? He says, the son of the virgin, our Lord Jesus Christ, met the son of the widow of today, right? He became like a sponge for her tears. This is the compassion that we see in the gospel of St. Luke, because the Lord is the great compassionate God, right? But he also became life for the son, right? As St. As John shows us, um, or as the scripture focuses on eternity and the kingdom of heaven, right? Death turned about in its den, like kind of like a lion that um, devours. It, it couldn't do anything when the Lord of life was present, right? Um, and turned its back on the victorious one. So here we see the power of God. Um, like, uh, let me just back up a little bit. Like when we see these four uh, gospels, um, when St. Matthew wrote, I'll, I'll just speak a little more about this, but when St. Matthew wrote, to the, to the Jews, he was appealing to them by the minds because they were thinking deeply about the Old Testament scripture and the prophecies. And uh, they knew, a lot of them knew it very well, but when Christ came, they couldn't put two and two together. And so he was unpacking that for them so that they would believe that he is God. Look, see all these prophecies? Christ is the fulfillment of all these prophecies. He was appealing to their mind. So like, let's say you have somebody you know who's not a believer or who is doubting or who who knows a lot and is smart, but they can't come to Christ, maybe the Gospel of St. Matthew might, might help uh, point to them that Christ is King because they were searching for the King. They were searching for the Messiah. Um, but some, something went wrong. The wires got crossed, um, and St. Matthew, who was also named Levi, right? Also a Levite um, uh, or an Israelite, um, was saying, look, you Jews, he here is the Christ, <laughs> right? Um, but if you have somebody who is focused more on power, on um, uh, amazing things that happen, right? Um, instead of focusing on the words of Christ, St. Mark focused on the actions of Christ and showing how even though he was humble and came to serve, he was mighty in power because he is God, right? Someone like that, you say, okay, like the Romans were, um, read the gospel according to St. Mark or read the epistle to the Romans, <laughs> for example, um, <clears throat> and, and focus on, so that's why St. Mark focused also on, on uh, several different types of miracles. Whereas like St. John, for example, he only, met, only mentioned about seven in detail. Um, and then if you have someone who's focused more on the heart, who, who likes 
um, emotional things <laughs> um, or wants to see the emotional aspect of Christ. So you read the gospel according to St. Luke, or maybe you can read the poetic books, for example, in the Old Testament, the Psalms, the Proverbs. There's something for everyone who's looking for um, beauty, whether in, in mind, body, heart, or spirit in scripture. Um, and so we just sometimes need to know where to look um, or which gospel to focus on. And so um, if, if you're looking for, okay, I need to believe that Christ is God, you have to read the gospel according to St. John, because that was his number one focus, right? Um, the divinity of Christ. Um, and um, if you want something spiritual, more spiritual, you know, then read one of, or actually any of the, the writings of St. John the Evangelist, right? <clears throat> Not that the others aren't, but each one has a different take on things, right? So um, this is what, and I'm just here comparing only the four Gospels, but um, the more we get to know about the other books of the Bible, the easier it becomes to uh, find out which medicine I need when I feel a certain sickness. Right? And sometimes your father of confession or a spiritual guide might help you with this. Many people will come and say, what book do I read? Sometimes we just say, okay, just if you haven't read the scripture from cover to cover yet, you know, maybe it's better to go in a certain order, um, like starting from Matthew, go to Revelation, and then go back to Genesis. Um, but, uh, but if you have, sometimes say, okay, I'm feeling down, I need some comfort. You, know, you read some of the, the books that focus on the comfort of God, or I need to, uh, I need wisdom, or I need to focus on wisdom. Okay, you read the books of wisdom, like the, the wisdom of uh, Solomon, or Ben Sirach, or something like that, right? Um, so this shows how all scripture is, is given by inspiration for God, and is profitable for us, for our minds, our bodies, our hearts, and our spirits, um, and that we may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. work. Um, <clears throat> and um, this is kind of uh, the gist of what we were uh, trying to speak of today, of uh, the, the goodness and the mercy of God that we find present in his power to heal and to save and to bring us to a better understanding of him. May God of all grace grant us um, his blessing so that we may know him better and we may live in him and with him forever. And glory be to God now and forever to the age of ages. Amen.